King Wu overthrows Zhou, and the fate returns to Zhou. But what does this have to do with my boy exam? I was eaten by my own father. Keywords of the novel Function I, Boi, will never become the Emperor of Purple Way. No pop ups, no gods. I will never become the Emperor of Purple Way in the Boi exam. Download the complete set of TXT, Function. I will never become the Emperor of Ziwei in the Boi exam. Latest chapter reading Chapter 1 Offering tribute to save father. That's called feeding. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Offering tribute to save father. That's called feeding. Shijin Tianjin, on the ancient path of Luin, a group of people and horses are galloping on horseback, with flags waving and the three gilded ancient characters, Marquis of Shibwa, written on them. Shichi. Ji Kao. Tribute to Song and Tribute. Ji Kao. Bo Yi Kao. Tribute. Let's call it, Xianli Tu Feed, when we step on the horse. Bang Dang. Ouch. A painful cry came from the carriage, and upon hearing the sound, a handsome young man with towering horns emerged, his face full of panic. Stop. Sigh, upon hearing the voice of the youth, the accompanying soldiers immediately stopped their horses and a small general hurriedly approached the carriage. Brother, what's wrong? Fifteen younger brothers. Upon seeing the visitor, Boi Yi Kao's name and identity instantly came to mind. Ji Gao, the fifteenth son of Ji Chang. Turn around, go back to Shichi. Boi Yi Kao issued the order without doubt. Ah. But we're not going. Do as I say. Seeing someone contradicting him, Boi Yi Kao pretended to be furious and waved his sleeve back into the carriage. Yes. Ji Gao's face changed and changed, but in the end, she didn't have the courage to disobey Boi Yi Kao's order and ordered the team to turn around. In the carriage, Boi Yi Kao sat tightly against the carriage, his back soaked in cold sweat, and he felt the carriage turning around before finally letting out a sigh of relief. Ha huh, it seems that there is no flaw exposed. After stabilizing for a while or two, he finally had the intention to look around. The ancient and luxurious decorations inside the carriage, including soft beds, silk, tabletops, and night pearls, were all in line with his current identity as the son of Marquis Shibwa. Finally, Boi Yi Kao set his gaze on a bronze mirror. There were about twenty people inside, handsome and handsome, with sword eyebrows and starry eyes, red and white teeth, and a majestic figure. They were dressed in white clothes and floated down to earth like exiles. Sure enough, I have traveled through. Boi Yi Kao smiled bitterly, spread out his hands, and grabbed the bound hair. But who's not good for you to travel through time? Even if you wear it on King Zhou. Why did it happen to be the Boi Yi exam he is going crazy? Who is Boi Yi Kao? The son of Shibwa Marquis Ji Chang and the future Central Purple Way Emperor. There are several unlucky people in function. At the beginning, he was chopped by King Zhou. It was also made into meat patties, which his own father agreed to eat. Chowga can never go. Whoever loves to go will go. Anyway, I won't go. Boi Yi Kao was ruthless in his heart, unable to do the task of feeding from thousands of miles away. Returning to Shichi, I am the future Marquis of Shibwa. In Shichi, I am the Earth Emperor, and I can do whatever I want. As long as it's not exposed. Boyi closed his eyes and a series of memories came to his mind. These were his memories, which were presented like fleeting observations of flowers. As memories digested, the ferocity and panic on Boyi Kao's face gradually subsided, revealing a gentle smile, which was his usual way of treating people. Finally, freeze the memory. Ikao my son, this time I will enter the court song for seven years. Wait in Shichi. Don't move around, wait for me to come back. This is Ji Chang's admonition to him before going to Chaoga. Rebel son, don't even listen to your father's words. 
Boy Yi Kao gritted his teeth, fortunately he dressed early. If he stayed any later, he might have experienced being chopped and fed to his father. But fortunately, with this sentence, my reason for turning back is understandable. Boy Yi Kao murmured to himself, his eyes gradually brightening. Three days later, Shichi City was already within sight. San Yisheng and GFA welcomed out of the Ten Mile Pavilion, and when they saw the team stop, they quickly stepped forward. Big brother, how did you come back? Before Boyi got off the exam, Jifa had already gathered around. San Yisheng also had a puzzled expression on his face as he stood on the side. He had been trying to persuade others, but the Boyi exam looked like he had already made up his mind and had to go. How could he change his character now? Upon hearing this, Boyi's face appeared embarrassed during the exam, and he stuttered and said. An old man dreamt that there would be a disaster of dismemberment when I went to court, and my father's food would be in dire straits. If I acted recklessly, it would not only harm myself and my father, but also drag Shichi into an irreparable land. Young master, do you believe me? San Yixing squinted and looked up and down at Boyi Kao's face. Coming, coming, success or failure depends on this one move. Boyi clenched his fist in his sleeve, but remained calm on the surface. His face only turned even redder, and he let out a long sigh. Ah! That old man, he made me listen to my dad. After speaking, Boyi brushed his sleeves and covered his face, feeling ashamed to see anyone. Before leaving, father and Marquis asked me to guard Shichi well and not move around. The old man didn't know where to find out, so he scolded me with his words. Go to court and sing. If you don't serve me, you won't be my son. The whole world will laugh at you. Cough. Seeing that Boyi Kao was about to shrink back into the carriage, San Yixing quickly approached and advised. The young master has a deep fortune and must have met a deity. Seeing that the young master is in trouble, he came to rescue him from the disaster. Ah, yes, it's because of my elder brother's deep fortune. GFA also advised. Is that right? Boyi Kao revealed half of his face, pondered and pretended to be in a difficult situation. The old man also said that a disaster star has arrived in our Shichi, just staying by the bank of the Wei River. After I go to Chauga and feed my father with dismembered corpses, I will incite my father and Marquis to rebel, young master, be cautious. San Yixing immediately stepped forward to interrupt Boyi Kao, glanced left and right, full of murderous intent. Today's matter, no one can mention it to the outside world, otherwise, the three barbarians. Get out Ten Zhang away. Here. A group of soldiers, along with GFA, were invited out Ten Zhang away, leaving only Boyi Kao and San Yixing by the carriage. Young master, don't mention such unfortunate words outside. San Yixing reminded repeatedly. Rebellion. What kind of rebellion does Shichi have? The five powerful gates of the Yin and Shang dynasties controlled the gateway of Shichi, and Zhang Guifang alone at Qinglong Pass could make Shichi suffer unbearably. I understand. Seeing such a strong reaction from San Yixing, Boyi Kao nodded repeatedly, and a smug expression in his eyes immediately withdrew, revealing a look of fear. So, with the intention of dispersing the doctor, what should we do? Since the immortal entrusted a dream to the young master, it is to let him take precautions in advance. San Yixing's face showed malice, and he secretly said in his heart. Marquis believes more than me, entrusts Shi Qi with important matters, and I cannot disappoint Marquis. Please give the order to General Nangong to mobilize 3,000 troops and horses to go to the Wei River. If there really is the disaster star Huashur, regardless of gender, age, and age, we will immediately settle down. When the five horses are dismembered. Before leaving, Father and Marquis asked me to listen more to the doctor's words. Now that I am in imminent danger in Shichi, I have no intention of refusing. Boi Yi Kao's eyes flickered with a dangerous light, and his words were full of emotion both inside and outside. Fifteen younger brothers. Immediately, 
General Nangong will lead 3,000 soldiers and horses to come and follow me to conquer the Wei River. Now my identity is confirmed. Boi Yi Kao couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. Over the past three days, he repeatedly improved his words in order not to reveal any flaws, and then diverted the attention of the Shichi courtiers. Next, just go to the Wei River and find the reclusive Jiang Zia, and everything will be settled. At the same time, Chaoga. Strange. How did my hexagram turn into a sign of great ferocity? Ji Chang's eyebrows tightly twisted into a ball, unable to understand. End of this chapter. Chapter 2. Jiang Zia, Death. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 2 Jiang Zia, Death. Boom boom, 3,000 soldiers and horses were strong and resolute, galloping like a torrent rolling over the earth, making deafening sounds. The leader is a general dressed in red armor, tall and full of blood and energy, as if a furnace is moving. Immortals are divided into five categories. Heaven, earth, humans, gods, and ghosts. The vast majority of the generals of the human race follow the path of human immortality, that is, using martial arts to enter the realm, polishing qi and blood, refining muscles and bones. Those who achieve great success can fight against great demons and true immortals, and step into the fairyland. The four major realms of martial arts under human immortality are innate, melting furnace, and dharma appearance, corresponding to refining essence and transforming qi, refining qi and transforming spirit, refining spirit and returning to emptiness, and refining emptiness to merge with the four realms of Taoism. As one of the four great marquises of the human race, the first general under the command of Marquis Shibwa, Nangong Shur naturally had already set foot in the realm of Dharma, leading a large army that could even suppress the true immortals. Young Master Nangong Shi dismounted from his horse and a fierce aura rushed towards him, as if a fierce beast in the wilderness was about to devour someone, exerting immense pressure. Thank you, General Nangong. Boi Yi Kao's eyes flickered slightly, his gaze sweeping over the soldiers and horses behind him. His qi and blood were thick, like a hole, and a fierce aura faintly emanated. With just one glance, he could tell that he was definitely a sharp teacher. If that's the case Boi Kao had already made plans in his heart. He took a step forward and helped Nangong Shur up. General Nangong, my life and the future of Shichi are all in your hands. Young Master. Feeling Boi Kao's trust in him, Nangong Shur's eyes turned red with excitement. As the saying goes, those who are close friends die. If he doesn't give his all and sacrifice his life, how can he bear such a heavy burden and trust? Don't worry, young master. I won't let the demonic way harm my Shichi peace. Leave it to the general, you can rest assured in the exam. Boi Yi Kao reached out and patted Nangong Shi's shoulder, leaned in for a moment or two, and lowered his voice, saying. Can the demon's way be cunning, better at seeking kindness and sympathy? If he were to pretend to be a seventy-year-old man with a fairy-like demeanor and a kind face, could the general still wield a sword? Don't mention the seventy-old man, who is the eighty-old mother. If he dares to harm me, Shichi, the last general will also break his body into pieces. Nangong Shi responded sternly. Okay. Boi Yi Kao's face was filled with joy and he said, General is truly the greatest general in our western Qi. Immortals are kind and have instructions in their dreams to distinguish between demons, so as not to harm the innocent speaking, Boi Yi Kao Fu Er Nan Gong Shi. The immortal said to me. Those who fish with a straight hook are demons. General, when you see it, don't hold back, don't talk nonsense, make a decisive decision, and cut it without mercy. Yes. After bowing his hand, Nan Gong Shi mounted his horse and said, Young master, don't risk yourself. Nangong will definitely bring the head of that demon path when he goes. No way. Boi Yi Kao quickly spoke up to stop it. This bloody thing didn't interest him. The demon way is cunning. After the general slays it, he should burn it with fire, 
then smash the bones and dust and scatter it on the Wei River. After speaking, Boi Yi Kao added, I believe in the general. Dare not comply with orders. Nan Gong Shi's blood boiled with enthusiasm, he rode his horse and whipped his whip, leading three thousand soldiers and horses straight to the bank of the Wei River. Jiang Shang, Jiang Zia, I'm sorry. Looking at the dusty road, Boi Yi Kao silently thought to himself. A friend of the dead path never dies of the poor path. If you are allowed to operate in Shichi, Baochi will lead me to rebel in Shichi. I have just lived a lifetime, and I don't want to die aimlessly anymore, paving the way for your calamity and your path. Young master, please go back to Shichi first, said San Yixing, who saw everything in his eyes and was even more satisfied. The young master has changed, become decisive in killing and becoming more like a marquis. No, the demon path never dies, and my heart is uneasy. Boi Yi Kao stopped his thought of dispersing Yixin, looked at the Wei River, and waited for the good news. Wei River After fleeing from Chaoga, Jiang Zia began fishing in the Wei River, waiting for a good opportunity. And his good opportunity was naturally when Boi Yi was admitted to the imperial examination and offered tribute, exchanging his life for Ji Chang. Only the pain of losing a son can make Ji Chang, sage, named Marquis of the West, disregard the power gap, the sorrow and happiness of the people, raise the banner of rebellion, and open the curtain of the 800 feudal lord's rebellion against commerce and the beginning of the great calamity of enfeoffment. Of course, he is not the mastermind behind the scenes, he just takes advantage of the situation. However, after Boi Yi Kao was impersonated and replaced, his fate trajectory will also change. Boom boom, the sound of horse hooves rolled like thunder, scaring away countless fish and shrimp. Jiang Zia frowned, showing a hint of displeasure. Just as she was about to pinch her fingers and make up a divination, she suddenly felt uneasy, as if a disaster was imminent. This place is not suitable for prolonged stay. Under the blessing of the soul, Jiang Zia put away his rod and hook, and was about to leave. At the moment when the fishing hook came out of the water, Nan Gongshi, who had just arrived, caught his eye. Straight hook. Old man. Demon way. Nan Gongshi's eyes suddenly shrank, and his body's chi and blood surged, faintly transforming into a fierce beast. Elderly people, take your time. Jiang Zia's eyelids twitched, but he stopped his steps by a strange trick and asked with a smile, where did the general come from? I have come to invite you. Nan Gong Shi laughed heartily and moved forward. Taking advantage of Jiang Zia's unpreparedness, he raised his sword and struck his owl head with a single blow. The scorching blood splattered three feet high like spring water, and Nan Gong Shi reached out and wiped his face, grinning. I'm here to invite you to the underworld. Someone. Ignite the fire, burn the body, smash the bones and dust, sprinkle the Wei River. Yes. My personal soldiers behind me responded, searching for firewood without mentioning it. Nan Gong Shi dismounted and picked up Jiang Zia's fishing rod. It's a straight hook, you didn't kill it wrong. Jiang Zia's body was separated and he lay quietly on the ground. I never expected that Shi Qi's people would hurt him and still use such a sneak attack method. Shouldn't you come and invite me out of the mountain? Isn't Feng Ming Shi Qi asking me to assist the Holy Lord? But why, Shi Qi wants to kill me? Unable to figure it out and without reason, under obsession, a resentment emerged from Jiang Zia's soul, intending to transform him into a fierce ghost. At this moment, a clear light shot out from the depths of Jiang Zia's soul, dispelling all resentment in the blink of an eye, protecting his soul Qingming and rolling him towards Kunlun. Kunlun Mountain, Yushu Palace The destined person should have three deaths and seven calamities, but it should not be at this time. The primitive heavenly sovereign sat on the clouds of the heavens, pinching his fingers to calculate the heavenly mechanism, but was blocked by the chi of calamity, creating a hazy atmosphere that could not be considered true. Is it a variable? But how can it change the overall situation? Tonger, go call the South Pole. 
the primitive heavenly sovereign is still at ease, and there is no need for him to personally intervene in the small matter of restoring the sun. Suddenly, the face of the primitive heavenly lord changed drastically, and a terrifying pressure rose from Kunlun, overwhelming the heavens and earth. Damn it! How dare one do this? Before the words could be finished, a giant hand crossed an endless territory and landed on the bank of the West Chi Wei River, picking up the body of Jiang Zia that had been thrown into the fire. Nan Gong Shir wanted to stop, but was crushed to the bone and bones, and three thousand soldiers and horses were crawling on the ground, unable to even lift their heads. Demon Wei! Demon Wei! I wish I had cut your thousand swords and ten thousand pieces. Young master, Nangong is ashamed of you. He is ashamed of Shichi. Nangong Shi's eyes were about to crack, shedding two lines of blood and tears, feeling extremely sad and angry. And this scene under the sky was seen by the entire Shichi. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Junior brother, isn't it just a matter of turning your head? You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 Junior Brother, Isn't It Just a Matter of Turning Your Head? Did you succeed? Boyi instinctively clenched his fist and stared at the movements on the other side of the Wei River, hoping to know the result immediately. Life and death are all in one fell swoop. In the Fengshan era, it was never Shi Qi who determined his life or death, but the three teachings. It's a saint. If, as in novels, a sage is omniscient and capable of seeing through all variables, then no matter how hard he struggles, he will be erased by a single finger. Similarly, if Jiang Zia is still alive after this calculation, it means that he has the qualification to survive as a boy examination and participate in it. And now, it's about to be revealed. One breath, two breaths waiting is the most terrifying thing, Boyi Kao's heart was in turmoil, and cold sweat soaked his whole body. After ten breaths, the storm in the sky was about to dissipate, but he still lived well. Who? Boyi breathed a sigh of relief, his body softened, and he almost fell to the ground. San Yisheng's eyes were sore and his hands were quick. He helped him up, thinking that he was worried about Nangong Shi and Shi Qi. He comforted him softly. Young master, General Nangong will be fine. The demon path will surely be executed. Mmm. Boyi nodded heavily, with a hint of blood turning back on his face. He stood alone and gazed into the distance. Until a smoke and dust appeared, the earth was shaking slightly. I'm back. Boyi's eyes lit up. San Yixing's heart sank. Something's wrong. Nangong Shi left wearing red armor, but among the returning team, where was there a trace of red shadow? The army cannot be seen from a distance, but can be detected from a distance. Morale is low and sorrowful, and even the sound of horse hooves has increased significantly. Boyi Kao also noticed and restrained the joy of surviving the disaster, sinking his expression. Sai, the army stopped Ten Zhang away from Boyi Kao and parted on both sides. Four soldiers carried stretcher-shaped equipment and walked out, with Nangong Shi lying on it, his red armor even brighter. Blood seeped through the cloth, dripping down with a ticking sound. General Nangong. Boyi Kao exclaimed in surprise and stepped forward in three or two steps, his gaze sorrowful as he said, Why so much? Young master, I will be ashamed of you. Nangong Shi has a hoarse voice and slightly moist eyes. The last general had already killed the demon and was about to burn his body when a terrifying presence took action and snatched his body away. I will try to stop you, but... General, don't blame yourself. Being able to kill that demon path is a great achievement. Boyi Kao clenched Nangong Shi's hands tightly, his tone moving. Someone. Carry General Nangong into my carriage and immediately return to Shichi. Gather the best doctors to treat General Nangong's injuries. Young master, it's not allowed. No way. That's the young master's car. Nangong Shi and San Yixing speak in the same voice. 
Boy Yi Kao saw the situation and waved his sleeve, shouting sternly. General Nangong is seriously injured for me, Zikikai. Where else can I suffer from turbulence? It's just a carriage, why can't we sit on it? Do you want to make me feel guilty about being a meritorious minister to Shichi? I dare not. San Yisheng quickly lowered his head, hiding the smile at the corner of his mouth in the shadow. General, don't refuse. The injury is severe and cannot be delayed. Hurry up and go to the city for treatment, Boi Yi Kao turned around and said kindly. Last general, thank you very much, young master. Nan Gong Shi's voice trembled, and the tense string relaxed, completely fainting. Return to the city. Shi Chi. Shibua Marquis Mansion. After passing this level, we can have a few days of peaceful life. Boi Yi Kao locked himself alone in the room, carefully reviewed his words and actions, and only then did he truly relax after confirming that there were no major flaws. Nangong Shi's injury just confirmed my identity and fulfilled all my words. From then on, I will be the true Boi Yi Exam. As for Jiang Zia, in the novel, he never dies out of the three deaths and seven disasters. He was robbed of his body this time, and it may not be long before he can be resurrected. However, do you dare to come and wander around Shichi after your resurrection? Boi Yi Kao felt fierce in his heart and said, Dare to come. I dare to find another chance to kill you. He is now the eldest son of a local marquis, and when Ji Chang dies, he will become the new marquis of the West. Why take the risk of being on the leaderboard and having the true spirit forever in the hands of others to overthrow Chaoga, overthrow King Zhou, and participate in this great calamity? Besides, what about being listed as the Emperor of Purple Way? The power of the heavenly court is in the hands of the heavenly emperor. He is at most a puppet and has to work for eternity. He lives 365 days a year without rest, living a life worse than 07. This kind of high dot ranking and influential longevity fool is the only one who wants it. Hold on to Shichi first, don't act rashly. After figuring out a way to shift those guys' gaze away from me, I'll go find a way to practice on my own, triumph has been achieved, I am carefree in the great task of the world. Even if I can't do it, I can still become the Purple Way Emperor in death. I'm afraid of nothing. Kunlun Mountain, Yushu Palace Jiang Zia's corpse lay on the cold hall, with neat wounds and a faint immortal disc swirling around it, and no trace of blood seeped out. Junior Brother Zia The Antarctic immortal was summoned by a boy, and upon seeing the corpse of Jiang Zia, he was shocked and quickly bowed. I pay my respects to the master. The master's holy life is boundless. Hmm. The primitive heavenly lord nodded slightly, and with a flick of his finger, a ray of immortal light penetrated Jiang Zia's body. The next moment, blood sprouted from the wound, and the body and head quickly grew together. The primitive heavenly lord reached out and grabbed Jiang Zia's three souls and seven souls, and he was hit by his backhand towards his body. Jiang Shang, if you don't wake up now, when will you wait? Gudong. A heartbeat sounded, and Jiang Zia slowly opened his eyes, feeling lost. Why? Why do the people of Shichi want to kill me? Junior brother Zia, why don't you quickly express your gratitude to the sage? The Antarctic fairy became anxious. Is that where you were stunned in front of the sage? Saint Lord. Jiang Zia was startled, and the confusion in her eyes instantly dissipated. She quickly knelt down to the ground. Disciple Jiang Shang paid his respects to his master, who had a boundless life. Thank you very much, master, for taking the initiative to save my disciple's life. Otherwise, otherwise. The disciple will die in the evil land of Shichi. Jiang Shang, your hit has three deaths and seven injuries. This is just a test, don't panic, said the primordial heavenly sovereign. Ah! I have to die twice more. Jiang Zia was shocked at the words and instinctively retreated. Humph! 
Seeing Jiang Zia's performance, the primitive heavenly lord was greatly displeased. With a wave of his sleeve, he swept him directly out of the Jade Void Palace. Ouch! Jiang Zia felt a great change in the surrounding environment, as if he had bumped into an iron wall behind his back. When he turned around, he saw the Antarctic fairy staring at him with an unpleasant expression on his face. Senior brother Antarctica, Jiang Zia weakly shouted. It's not that he's timid, but rather that Nan Gongshir's violent blow left a deep shadow on him. Junior brother Zia, you bear the heavy burden of a great calamity. How could you be so timid and afraid? Isn't it just a loss? Seeing Jiang Zia's appearance, the Antarctic immortal felt even more unhappy in his heart. Senior brother said it's light and agile. Jiang Zia muttered softly, wanting to argue with reason, but her gaze caught sight of a scene in the distance, and she was instantly startled and jumped three feet high. Ah! End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Senior Brother Zia, I'm here. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 4 Senior Brother Zia, I'm here, Senior Brother, I died so miserably. In the distance, a head was flying up and down in the mountains, playing happily. It is Shen Gongbao who is practicing the technique of flying the skull. Upon hearing Jiang Zia's screams, Shen Gongbao controlled his head and looked over. When he saw Jiang Zia, his eyes lit up instantly. Senior brother, do you think I'm beautiful? Bah! Senior brother, I died so miserably. Shattered with disheveled hair, Shen Gongbao controlled his head and flew towards Jiang Zia, emitting a mournful howl in his mouth, like a vengeful ghost under the Nine Netherworld coming to seek his life. Junior brother, how could you also have your head chopped off by someone? Returning to his senses, Jiang Zia's eyes were filled with sorrow. As soon as he thought about his own experiences, a wave of sympathy couldn't help but rise in his heart. Unexpectedly, he forgot his fear and reached out to embrace the head of Shen Gongbao flying over. Ah! That's not right. Shen Gongbao was startled when his senior brother was so bold. Did you also have your head shaved off? Sensing something was wrong, Shen Gongbao controlled his head and tried to dodge, only to find that at some point, one hand had already been placed on his head. How could I forget there's such a way? The Antarctic fairy smiled and hung the Shen Gongbao on his cane. Shen Gongbao Jr. Brother, you have learned magic, but you use it to scare people. Senior Brother from Antarctica Shen Gongbao exclaimed in his heart that he was unlucky. No wonder Jiang Zia was not afraid of his appearance. It turned out that there was a backer around. I'm just joking with my senior brother to see how well I can practice the flying skull technique. Shen Gongbao looked resentful and secretly cast a spell to break free, only to find that the instructions were like sinking rocks into the sea, and he couldn't even blink except for speaking. The Antarctic fairy naturally paid no attention to Shen Gongbao's ideas, as they were just examples he used for teaching. Pointing at Shen Gongbao's head, the Antarctic fairy said to Jiang Zia. Junior brother Zia, look, isn't it just a matter of losing your head? Dot. Jiang Zia rolled his eyes inwardly. Can it feel the same as being killed when practicing spells on his own? However, it seems that cutting off one's own head is a bit more ruthless. Suddenly, Jiang Zia trembled all over and thought of a terrifying scene. He looked up and met the smiling gaze of the Antarctic fairy. Damn it! As expected, the Antarctic fairy smiled and said. Since junior brother can't overcome this obstacle, senior brother will have to help you. He's used to this head falling and falling. Senior brother, no need, no need. Jiang Zia waved his hand repeatedly and urgently said, Junior brother, I can overcome this obstacle, I can overcome it. The Antarctic immortal ignored Jiang Zia and brought up the Shen Gongbao hanging on a cane in front of him. Shen Gongbao junior brother, I have a heavy burden to entrust to you. Don't worry, senior brother. Junior brother knows how to do it, jie jie. Shen Gongbao's eyes burst with brilliance, and his smile was filled with ill intentions. 
he is not a fool. In just a few words, he analyzed the situation and understood his so dot called task. To teach Jiang Zia the art of flying the skull. Being able to cut off Jiang Zia's head with one's own hands more than once is really. I hope so. Great goodness. The Antarctic fairy is very satisfied, and this method of using poison to fight poison often takes effect faster. Moreover, with Shen Gongbao's full resentment towards Jiang Zia, he would definitely take this matter seriously. The matter of Zia Junior Brother stepping out of the shadows is just around the corner. Junior Brother Zia, you should study hard with Shen Gongbao and not disappoint the sage's expectations of you. Before leaving, the Antarctic fairy did not forget to add another flame, making Shin Gongbao's jealousy even more intense. Do I still have a choice? Jiang Zia's heart was like falling into an ice cave, as it cooled from head to toe. Jie Jie Jie, senior brother, please stay behind. I will come when I go, junior brother. I will personally help senior brother cultivate the immortal technique through engagement. After realizing that his head could move again, Shen Gongbao left with a strange smile. In no time, a middle-aged Taoist dressed in a black robe rushed over with his sword and wind, his face full of excitement. Senior brother, junior brother is here. Click. With a flash of sword light, Jiang Zia's newly grown head flew out again and was quickly picked up by Shen Gongbao. Senior brother, it's not urgent. Let's take our time and practice 180 times before we speak. Shibwa Marquis Mansion After visiting his biological mother, Taiji, Boyi Kao began to handle government affairs. Ji Chang has acquired the eight trigrams, which are derived from the heavens and calculate human life. They are extraordinary and highly regarded by the people of Shichi. If he comes back, I'm afraid there's a considerable risk of exposure. This risk cannot be taken. Boy Yi Kao secretly felt fierce in his heart. I just need to have a positive attitude of saving my father, otherwise it will be too different from my persona, and more likely to show off my shortcomings. Now that my foundation is still shallow, I must be cautious in every word and action, and my subordinates have no loyalty to die, otherwise. Boy Yi Kao's gaze flickered, and ideas came to mind one by one, but he denied them one by one. At the end of the day, Shichi's team is still Ji Chang's team. They are Ji Chang's retainers, but not his Boyi Kao's retainers. If he rebelled alone, the outcome would definitely not be good. If we can accumulate strength for three to five years, win over generals and courtiers, and have the possibility of dominating the world, but time waits for no one. Ji Chang's seven dot year misfortune is coming to an end but his escape from the disaster was bought with my flesh and blood. Now that I have not gone to pay tribute, will there be a turning point in this matter? I must go to pay tribute to save my father, as this is in line with my identity and personality. It can't be me going, as soon as I go, it will definitely be gone. It can't be a casual life either. As a strategist, San Yixing is too clever. Once he goes to Chaoga, he travels upstream and downstream to manage things. He is afraid that he can really bring Ji Chang back. He doesn't really want to bring Ji Chang back. So, I need to find someone to replace me, and this person must be obedient, honest, and have a sense of justice. Boi Yi Kao's mind searched for the people of Shichi, and there were not many who met these criteria, but the most suitable one was none other than GFA. However, GFA is a double dot edged sword, destined to be the Holy Lord of Heaven, with prosperous luck. Such people are often invincible. If you make a fool of yourself, I'm afraid you can really save Ji Chang. No way. Boi Yi Kao once again denied that before his foundation was established, he could never take action against Ji Fa. At this moment, footsteps could be heard outside the door, and a guard came to report. Young master, the doctor is seeking to see you in person. I understand now. Upon hearing this, Boi Yi Kao was overjoyed. He seemed to have advised himself to use a small soldier to greet him. Perhaps he can give himself some advice. In the hall, 
the boy exam arrived in a hurry. Before anyone arrived, the sound had already been heard. Dr. San has arrived just in time. I'm going to find you. Young master, San Yisheng quickly stood up and bowed his hand. Dr. San, although I cannot personally go to pay tribute to my father, the matter of paying tribute to save him cannot be delayed. We need to put it on the agenda again. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Your father has a way to die. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 5 Your father has a way to die, if the young master goes to save the Marquis in the name of paying tribute, the leader of the team must have sufficient identity. San Yixing secretly scrutinized Boi Yi Kao, hoping to see his true attitude from it. Are you trying to save your father? Or Brothers can harm each other and eliminate dissidents. No way. Boi Yi Kao immediately vetoed, for me, Shi Qi, Chaoga is like a dragon pond and tiger's den, a demon cave that eats people but doesn't spit out bones. Whether it's the younger brother of the orphan, or the civil and military officials like the scattered doctor, they must never go into danger. Even if you go alone, there is a risk of dismemberment. Father's food is in danger, so if you go, Chowga will not have any worries. Most likely, you will bear the possible disaster of being alone. San Yixing carefully examined Boi Yi Kao and saw that his words and expressions did not seem to be fraudulent, which relieved him. It seemed that he was being suspicious. Then we can't go under the formal name of tribute. After a moment of contemplation, San Yixing said. I heard that in the court, the foolish ruler favored treacherous officials and may have bribed Fei Zhong and Yu Hun with treasures to make the foolish ruler relax and release him to the Marquis. Not at all. Faced with the real way to save Ji Chang in the novel, Bo Yi Kao naturally immediately refused and said with righteous words. I, Shi Qi, am a wise and loyal person. How could I bribe that cunning and cunning person? If it gets out, how can I lift my head from Shi Qi in the future? This scattered Yi Sheng's words are stuck, when is it still shameless? Can you save your father with your face? However, what the doctor said also makes sense, Boi Yi Kao's tone changed. Upon hearing this, San Yi Sheng was overjoyed, but was thrown into the body by the next words of Bo Yi Kao, Lei. Rather than bribing treacherous officials, it is better to visit loyal and virtuous people. There is a royal uncle's comparison in the court song, and the Wuching King Huang Feihu, who are all famous loyal ministers in the world. If we ask for them with courtesy, it must be enough to persuade that foolish ruler to release my father and Marquis. Bo Yi Kao felt proud and pleased. Young master, this. San Yixing smile is bitter. If he really does this, your father may already have a way to die. All right, that's it. Bo Yi Kao immediately made a decision. The ink has been on for so long, and he doesn't want to be destroyed by San Yixing. The doctor will first visit General Nangong on my behalf. Once you have given me the order, I will come. This. Yes. San Yixing walked out of the hall numbly, and the warm sunshine spread throughout his body, making him feel cold all over. Is it true that the young master wants to borrow a knife to kill someone? A chill surged from my heart, and San Yixing dared not continue to speculate. No. I won't do it. Young master, you must be filial, righteous, and virtuous. How could you do such a heinous and immoral thing? I just overthought it, I overthought it. Although there was a hint of carelessness, it was not a big deal. Bo Yi Kao stood in the hall, watching San Yixing disappear from his sight. Fei Zhong and Yu Han are like two watchdog dogs of Emperor Exion. They love to use their power to attract people they come and go with, and won't let them in without peeling off a layer of skin. This kind of person is the most greedy and jealous. And Shi Qi's treasure is like a flesh bone, if they see it but don't get it, they will go crazy, but anyone dares to bite it. At that time, let alone Ji Chang, even if he can survive, his fate will be hard. Moreover, 
counting the days, Bai Gan and Huang Feihu may be on the verge of death and escape. At that time, there were no loyal ministers or generals in the court, and who could stop the two evil dogs Fei Zhong and Yu Hun? Boi Yi Kao summoned his younger brother and roughly explained his plans and attitude towards Fei Zhong and Yu Hun before arranging the matter. Next, we'll just wait. Chaoga. As time passed, Ji Chang's heart became increasingly uneasy. A daily hexagram, but the hexagram is becoming more and more dangerous day by day, and soon it will be a desperate situation of ten deaths and no life. Who can tell me what exactly happened? Ji Chang roared angrily, but there was no one around, so quiet that it was terrifying. He could never have imagined that everything was due to his filial piety as a parent. Child. Ji Chang became dejected. As the seven dot year disaster was about to come to an end, such a change had arisen in vain, and every time he calculated the root cause, what he received was a mist. It's like someone was dissatisfied with his story and waved their hand to erase his future. Is my path of life only focused on food? At night, a demonic aura flew out of the palace and headed straight towards the south of the city. Thirty miles south of the city, there is a tomb named Xianyuan Tomb, which is the cave of the three demons. Grandma is back. As soon as Daji fell into the demonic wind, dozens of fox demons came out, each with a fox head and a human robe, and their words and actions were also learning from others. Where's the second grandmother at home? Without seeing the nine-headed pheasant chicken spirit, Daji asked. Grandma is not unaware. Second grandma is determined to fly up to the branch and become a phoenix. A few days ago, second grandma said something like, Phoenix crows in the west, so she let us take care of the house. She went to search for that phoenix. A little demon obediently replied. Shi Chi. Daji nodded to indicate that he knew, and then smiled. Children, the dear terrace is about to be built, and your good days are coming. Grandma, be merciful. The fox demons became a mess, chasing and playing in the grave, overjoyed. Daji watched this scene with joy and said, if one person gets the way, a chicken and a dog will ascend to heaven. That's what I'm talking about, right? And the nine-headed pheasant chicken essence had already arrived at the foot of Qishan. Feng Ming in the West Qi, the holy lord of the Western Zhou dynasty. Hu Shi Mei had seductive eyes and spent the night searching for the traces of one or two phoenixes in Qishan. However, when the sun rose, she still found nothing. How could it not be? That's the words of a saint. Hu Shi Mei is a bit impatient and frustrated. She is already an outsider who only seeks orthodoxy, and the phoenix is the leader of all birds. If she gets the opportunity to return to her ancestors and become that nine-headed phoenix, who dares to mock her? Saints won't deceive me, Qishan must have my chance. She was unwilling, unwilling to let the opportunity slip away from her hands like this. Suddenly, an extremely noble aura appeared at the foot of the mountain, making her tremble from the bottom of her heart. It's a phoenix. Hu Shimei was overjoyed, rolling up a demonic wind and rushing towards the foot of the mountain. At this moment, a weak crowned boy with a white jade side rode his horse to the foot of the mountain, followed by a dozen or twenty soldiers, all holding long bows. My elder brother is afraid that he might have been scared out of his wits. He dare not go to pay tribute to save his father and Marquis himself, and he won't let us go either. G.F.A. shot three arrows in a row, and in the midst of a surge of true energy, the arrows entered without a stone, in order to vent her dissatisfaction. Behind him, every follower dared to answer, but silently dispersed to drive away the prey for Jifa, so that he could vent his anger. Humph. G.F.A. became even more agitated. With a long bow in her hand that was like a full moon, she let go and the arrow shot away like a shooting star, disappearing in an instant. Ouch. A faint cry of pain could be heard in the distance, and G.F.A.'s face turned pale. She quickly drew her bow and stepped forward to check. Did you hurt someone? If he accidentally shoots someone, 
he will definitely be locked up for a few days by Boyi Kao when he goes back. And when he arrived at the place where the sound came from and saw a scene under the tree, his mouth became dry and his tongue became dry. He quickly stopped his attendants. You all stop. Don't come forward. Don't peek. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 The Demon Comes You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 The Demon Comes What is the Scene Under the Tree? The arrows launched by G were nailed to the tree, and there was a set of big red clothes hanging on it, swaying in the wind as if waving an invitation. Grandpa, come and play. Under the tree, a charming mature woman panicked and curled up, trying her best to protect the leaked spring light. Tears streamed down my eyes and my face was filled with helplessness. There was only a bright red obscene robe and a red belly pocket embroidered with a phoenix on her body, revealing a pair of jade arms. Her thighs were round, and in the sunlight, they shone like the finest white porcelain. Seeing that G.F.A. Kwan's hair was hard, he quickly drove his horse forward and said, Miss, don't be afraid, I'm not a good person. No, I mean, I'm a good person. Immediately approaching, Jifa was stunned for a long time before realizing it. She took off her coat and reluctantly handed it over. What a pity, thank you very much, young master. Hu Shimei pitifully took it over, simply turning her back. Her dressing movements were not significant, but she could just show Jifa something she shouldn't have seen. Then, the following story is so logical and natural. If I could swallow this phoenix aura, I, Hushime, would definitely be able to transform into a true phoenix. Shibwa Marquis' Mansion As soon as Jifa returned, she eagerly entered her room with her prey. Half a quarter of an hour later, all his experiences outside Shichi City had been compiled into a book and presented to Boyi Kao. Hush! What an obvious pig-killing dish! Boyi's eyelids twitched as he looked at it. Hunting, beauty, and bringing it home were all outdated tricks, right? And when he saw the name Beauty above, he couldn't sit still in an instant. Hu Shime. Boyi Kao furrowed his brows and instinctively tapped his fingers on the table. Although his name was not as good as Daji's, it still had a name in the realm of function. Hu Shime, the nine-headed pheasant chicken spirit, the second among the three demons of Xianyuan tomb. But shouldn't she be serving Emperor Xian with Daji at this time? How did she chi seduce GFA, this furry guy? Millennium Demon, dear second brother, I hope you can bear it. He has already begun to mourn for Jifa in his heart, but what does this have to do with him? He doesn't need to sacrifice his appearance to please this millennium old demon. As for what will happen to Jifa? Jokes. He cares about Jifa. For him, this is just a familiar stranger, and he may even be an enemy in the future. What does life and death have to do with him? That's Boyi Kao's brother, he's just an imposter, not the real Boyi Kao. A brother will die if he dies. However, now that Nangong is seriously injured and recuperating, Shichi is empty and somewhat powerless in the face of the millennium old demon. It's also good to use, brothers, to attract the attention of this old demon. Thinking of this, Boyi Kao waved his hand and called for two guards. Command the pantry to cook a serving of ginseng and hen for my second brother. No, dear antler and tiger whip soup. Send me my ginseng from five hundred years old again, yes, young master. The guards hurriedly left after taking orders. After the guards left, Boyi thought for a moment and still felt that something was wrong. Hu Shime was like an unstable bomb, maybe it would explode at some point. A gentleman does not stand under a dangerous wall. After finally reviving his life, he didn't want to hastily die anymore. Everything was focused on saving his life, and if he didn't take risks, he would never take them. Someone, prepare a generous gift and follow me to visit General Nangong. Only Nangong Shur, the peak of a mortal warrior, can balance this millennium old demon in the entire Shichi. If I had known earlier, I wouldn't have dealt with Jiang Zia for now. 
Boy Yi Kao felt a bit regretful in his heart, but let him choose, he would still choose to start with Jiang Zia first. As for Hu Shimei, she can only wait for Nangong Shi to recover and lead a large army to suppress her, or find a few, immortals, to subdue her. And the top priority is to ensure his own safety. So, after visiting Nangong Shi yesterday, Boi Yi Kao once again ascended to the general's mansion. The original Heavenly Lord only took action to save Jiang Zia, but he didn't have the intention to kill a few ants to vent his anger. The only thing that injured Nangong Shi was a hint of sage pressure that was inadvertently revealed. The stronger the resistance, the more severe the injury. So, Nangong is comfortable lying down. After several days of treatment, various precious spiritual medicines were used at no cost, and with the healing power of Nangong Shina's physical body, which was almost out of the realm of mortals, he was now able to barely walk. Young master, I will be ashamed. Seeing Bo Yi Kao once again condescending to visit him, a useless minister, Nangong Shi was more moved than ashamed. Good birds choose trees to roost, and wise officials choose their masters to act. The favor of today's preferential treatment should be repaid a hundred times or a thousand times in the future, until death. General Nangong, don't be too polite. Bo Yi Kao took three steps and two steps simultaneously, lifting Nangong Shijian with both hands. General, if you are injured, it's important to cultivate yourself and not make any major moves. It seems that this wave of buying people's hearts has been done well. Bo Yi Kao thought to himself, however, it is also due to the social atmosphere of ancient times, coupled with the fact that most of the generals are simple and not so convoluted. Thank you very much, young master. Nangong Shi was deeply moved and led Bo Yi Kao towards the hall. Bo Yi Kao sat in the main seat and after a few pleasantries, he also took the opportunity to express his purpose of coming. When will the general be able to fully recover? The last general can now go to the battlefield to kill the enemy. Nangong Shi stood up excitedly. With a surge of qi and blood, his wound was once again shattered, and his whole body was engulfed in blood. In an instant, he turned into a bloody person. He lay down again in a daze. Bo Yi Kao opened his mouth wide and was momentarily stunned before realizing. Pass on the doctor quickly. The general's mansion was in a hurry. Fortunately, as Nangong Shi was still in the recuperation stage, there were still several physicians who stayed in his mansion, even if they came to stop his bleeding. Otherwise, Nangong Shi may have sent it due to bleeding. What's going on here? Bo Yi Kao returned to the Marquis' mansion dejectedly. He asked the doctor and said that it would take at least three months for Nangong Shi to recover, and at least six months to go to the battlefield. Half a year. If something goes wrong, Hushime, this millennium-old demon, has eaten him a thousand or eight hundred times, so he definitely won't be able to count on it. How about sending GFA away? Boyi's eyes lit up as he thought about it more and more. Isn't he shouting to save my father for me? Chowga can't let him go, but there are other places to go. Beihai, Grand Master Wenzhong. Boyi Kaoshua wrote six big characters. In the name of saving my father, I sent GFA to send provisions to Beihai to meet with Grand Tutor Wenzhong. And Wen Zhong is the third generation's personal transmission of Duanjiao. His eyebrows, hearts, and eyes can penetrate people's hearts and explore demons. Hu Shimei doesn't know the details, so if she follows recklessly, she will probably be slaughtered. As soon as the news returns to Chaoga, Daji knows that Hu Shimei has died due to GFA. With the anger of that millennium old fox, it may even kill Ji Chang. One arrow carves more. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Farewell the demon from thousands of miles away. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 7 Farewell the demon from thousands of miles away The 70.2 feudal lords in Beihai, led by Yuan Futong, rebelled and Chaoget dispatched the Grand Tutor Wen Zhong to suppress it. It's ridiculous that these small 70.2 feudal lords have been dragging Wen Zhong for a whole seven years. 
However, whether it is hidden or not, it has nothing to do with the current Boyi exam. He only needs to know that with Wen Zhong's ability, it is enough for him to complete the act of borrowing a knife to kill. The young master's filial piety is commendable. San Yi let out a sigh and completely let go of any inexplicable guard in his heart. Sure enough, the young master is still that young master. Even if he grows or changes, his essence is still so lenient, loyal, and benevolent. He always misses his father, and this is great filial piety. Wen Zhong is the current grand tutor of the dynasty. Even the foolish ruler should respect the three elders of the three dynasties. If he is willing to speak for the Marquis, he will definitely return. Since that's the case, then transport 10,000 stones of grain and escort them to the Beihai battlefield. Upon hearing this, Boi Yi was overjoyed and waved his hand, immediately sending someone to raise supplies. I don't know who the young master wants to send to Beihai to meet the old master. San Yixing took the initiative to fill in the gaps in the Boi Yi examination. The Grand Tutor has a noble status, and the young master should not neglect it. It is best for the person sent to have a certain level of status in order to demonstrate my sincerity as Shichi. Is there a candidate? Boi Yi Kao pretended to ponder, and after a moment, he asked in a deliberative tone. How is my younger brother G.F.A.? Second young master. San Yixing was first surprised, and then thought about it. Whether it was his status or reasons, G.F.A. was indeed the most suitable candidate. But I always feel like there's a malicious intent inside. What's going on? A few days ago, didn't Brother Zhong bother to pay tribute for me? But Chaoga is too dangerous for us, so we refused him. Boyi Kao smiled and said this trip to Beihai is just to meet the old grand tutor. Neither Chaoga nor Yuan Fudong will touch our troops from Shichi, and our safety is still guaranteed. Just let Brother Zhong go to fulfill his filial piety. After my father and Marquis return, I can also show him more face, the young master is virtuous, San Yixing nodded repeatedly. Quickly, Jifa was summoned to the hall. What? Upon hearing that she was about to be sent to the Beihai battlefield, Jifa looked incredulous. What's going on? Brother Zhong, isn't it that you're clamoring to go save Father Ho? Boi Yi Kao suppressed his smile and deliberately tightened his face, as if dissatisfied with GFA's reaction. The importance of the trip to Beihai is even greater than the song of the court. If the Grand Tutor hears that Zhongming's class is returning to the court and gives some advice on behalf of my father, it will surely help my father and Marquis escape from the bitter sea as soon as possible. No, no, I. Jifa hesitated, somewhat reluctant. The young man broke his body and was trained by millennia old demons such as the nine headed pheasant chicken spirit. It was precisely when he tasted the essence and was deeply trapped in the gentle countryside. Now when it comes to leaving, of course I can't bear to part ways. You don't want to. Boi Yi Kao's face instantly darkened, even San Yixing beside him squinted. It seems that we need to carefully examine this second young master. No, of course I would. G.F.A. blushed and waved her hand repeatedly, just, just. If you don't want to, let it go. Even if your father and Marquis have 90.9 .9 sons, they won't miss you as a middle hair. Boyi angrily waved his sleeve and pretended to be ashamed and angry before leaving. Young master. San Yixing spoke up to stop, but G.F.A. also panicked. She took two steps forward and tugged at Boyi Kao's sleeve. Brother, I am willing to go, I am willing to go. Humph. Boyi snorted coldly, his face softened slightly, and his tone remained stiff. Then pack up and tidy up. When the supplies are raised, you can lead the team. After speaking, Boyi Kao shook off GFA's palm and left. Air Gongzi. San Yixing walked over and looked at GFA. His lips moved slightly, wanting to say something, but in the end, it turned into a long sigh. Sigh. I didn't say I couldn't go. GFA stood alone in the empty main hall, wanting to cry without tears. 
Feeling dejected all the way, when he regained his senses, he found himself back in his own courtyard, parked in front of Mayer's house. Squeak. The door opened wide, and Hushime rushed into GFA's arms like a flame, saying happily. Husband, you're back. Hmm. If it had been before, Jifa would have been unable to control it, but now, the interest is really not high. Not very interested. How can this work? Hushime was enjoying the Phoenix Chi while inhaling it, feeling that her original source was undergoing transformation. It was hard to let GFA withdraw. Husband, what's wrong with you? Hushime exclaimed coquettishly, spitting out orchid fragrance. GFA sucked in a little bit, and in an instant, she gained momentum. She picked up Hushime with her back hand and walked into the room. He 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 he. A gust of demonic wind suddenly arose, and the door automatically closed after everything, Jifa only felt her eyes dark and her whole body cold. Mayor, may I have to leave you? What? Hushime was startled in her heart and almost went berserk, but it was actually a millennium-long Taoist journey. She reacted quickly and buried herself in GFA's arms, crying with a whimper. Husband, is it Maya who did something wrong? No, no, no. Jifa panicked and stood up, seeing Hushime's tearful pear blossoms with rain, her heart was filled with even more pity. I'm going on a trip to Beihai to find the Grand Tutor Wen Zhong and ask him to save my father Ho back to Shichi. Mayor, when my father and Marquis return to Shichi, I will go and ask him to make the decision and marry you in. Husband, Hushime burst into tears and smiled, her voice sweet and greasy, and a strange fragrance emanated from her body. GFA was panting like a cow in an instant. In that case, I'll accompany you along. I haven't knocked you to the bone yet, eating and wiping you clean, want to run. There's no door. Even if I run to the ends of the earth, I won't let you go. Mayor. Jifa is working even harder. It's getting faster, after clearing these obstacles, I can start enjoying it. Boyi Kao looked towards the courtyard where GFA was, his mouth slightly curled up. With the full cooperation of San Yisheng, in less than ten days, ten thousand stones of grain and supplies, as well as the escort troops, have been in place. Big brother, I'm sure I can persuade the old master to come forward and rescue his father and Marquis. GFA held the drink in both hands and looked serious. Just trembling legs and a pale complexion forcibly disrupted this solemn atmosphere. Everything depends on Brother Zhong. Boyi Kao's eyes were filled with tears, with a deep brotherly expression, but he secretly caught a glimpse of the procession, with a high dot quality carriage mixed in. The curtain opened a slit, and a gaze was looking towards him, just in front of him. Nine headed pheasant chicken essence. Boyi Kao's heart was clear, and he calmly averted his gaze. Brother Zhong, the journey here is far away, take good care of your health. Brother, too. GFA's emotions were also infected, she looked up and drank a lot, then resolutely turned around and left. Boyi Kao returned to the city wall and witnessed the team go far away, until no more shadows could be seen. Young master, don't worry. Second young master, if you go here, it will be successful. San Yixing advised on the side. Hmm. Boykeo nodded slightly, but his heart was filled with joy and uncontrollable joy. That's great. Finally, I stepped on my horse and left. I don't have to worry about sleeping or having an extra monster in the bed anymore. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 The Demon Returns in the Midnight You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 The Demon Returns in the Midnight The carriage swayed and swayed until the crescent moon smiled it says, it says, you hear chickens crowing late at night, the bumpy carriage finally settled down. A gust of wind blew by, and a corner of the curtain was lifted, as if something flashed by. The wind rises in the northwest, and a dark cloud appears out of thin air, casting a shadow that dims the silver and white moonlight. Undoubtedly, it is the land of Shichi, 
the birthplace of the Holy One. Hu Shime smiled coquettishly, her eyes filled with greed. I thought that GFA's Phoenix Aura was already precious, but to my surprise, there was also a Bo E Cow who said, My destiny gathers the stars, harmonizes the sun and moon, and is extremely noble. Dot. Although it was just a fleeting glance during the day, she knew she had definitely read it right. The sun and shade intersected above Boy e Cao's head and turned into thousands of golden threads, priceless. Emperor Lu Jiang. That's definitely Emperor Lu Jiang. Since the ancient battle of the Lich Demons, the Demon King and Queen have fallen and become the treasures of the demon race that have disappeared from the world. Rumors can make all demons wise and prove the supreme elixir of demon immortality. Take him. You must take him. Not only can it be shared with the elder sister and become immortal, but it can also allow the third sister to give birth to spiritual intelligence and transform into a world. At that time, my sisters, the three demons, will be happy to become immortals together. The female demon only cares about her own happiness, regardless of whether the man can bear it or not. Yao Yun was extremely fast and returned to Shichi in a moment. Hu Shimei stopped in the air, her small mouth opened, and she exhaled a wisp of white air. In the blink of an eye, it turned into a thick fog, engulfing the entire Shichi city. Young master I'm here, a decadent sound sounded, charming and graceful, making people feel hot and hot all over, and their chi and blood spurted. At this moment, Boi Yi Kao was sleeping deeply. Mist surged in from the gaps between the doors and windows, and was unconsciously sucked into his body. Hmm. Where am I? Boi Yi Kao only felt that he was inside a layer of fog, surrounded by a hazy and indistinct view. He instinctively moves forward, then moves forward, and keeps moving suddenly, the mist seemed to dissipate, and he found himself standing in a basketball court, with a terrifying scene ahead. The chicken demon is hitting the ball. In an instant, Boi Yi Kao woke up from his dream and opened his eyes. A beautiful woman was lying on his head. Seeing Boi Yi Kao wake up unexpectedly, Hu Shimei was surprised and smiled. Young master, am I beautiful? You're so beautiful. Boi Yi Kao's inexplicable strength slapped him. Pop. With a crisp sound, Hu Shimei was whipped away and fell under the bed. Bold demon, I can tell at a glance that you're not a human. Boi Yi Kao was righteous and full of righteousness, his hands gathered in his sleeves, clenched into fists, concealing his nervousness. Nima. Isn't this old hen leaving with Jifa? Why did you step on your horse and come back in the middle of the night? If I slap her, I'm afraid she will hate me and devour me alive. You dare to hit me. Hu Shimei was stunned for three breaths before realizing it. Her eyes were fierce, and she exuded a strong demonic aura, flooding the entire room. A little chick, who gave you the courage to speak to me like this? Boi Yi Kao retorted sharply, trembling with anger and pointing at Hu Shimei's nose, cursing. Nine-headed pheasant chicken essence, you may have forgotten what your mission is. Um. Hu Shimei's fierce aura dissipated a lot, and she instinctively dared not look at Boi Yi Kao. How does he know my heel? How does he know my task? Effective. Seeing Hu Shimei being intimidated, Boi Yi Kao breathed a sigh of relief in secret, still pretending to be angry. He walked down from the bed and walked step by step towards Hu Shimei. Lonely asking you, answer me. I, the little demon didn't forget. After being repeatedly questioned by Boi Yi Kao, Hu Shimei had completely lost her composure and was lying on the ground, not daring to lift her head. Empress, let your three demons sing in the morning of cholera, seduce the foolish emperor Xian, and wait for me to raise an army to overthrow the Yin Shang and change it to Tang Jiang Shang. But what are you doing now? What are you doing in Shichi? Why bother my marquis's mansion again? Boi Yi Kao drank and asked repeatedly, looking down at Hu Shimei from a high position and coldly saying. What do you want me to do? I, I, the little demon was wrong. The little demon deserves to die a thousand times. Please spare your life, 
Holy Lord. Spare your life. If you break the instructions given by the Empress, it would be a supreme grace for you three demons to not be so scared. Boy Yi Kao continued to hold the tiger skin flag. The little demon must not dare to harm the woman. As soon as Hushime spoke, she was stopped by Boy Yi Kao's sharp voice. Shut up! The Empress Saint's name is also something you, a little demon, can shout. Yes, yes, the little demon was wrong. Hushime was so frightened that her whole body trembled, almost showing her true form, unaware that Boikeo had been frightened into a cold sweat. It's a close call, she almost read it out. Boy Yi Kao was still trembling with fear. If he recited his name, it would attract attention, and by then his lies would be exposed. Being killed by a chicken is still a small matter, just afraid of making a correction. Send him to Chowga Chop Bar Chop Bar Feed Dad. Who asked you to harm the orphan? Stable one or two, Boy Yi Kao asked again. Report to the Holy Lord, no one, yes, it was the little demon who saw the noble destiny of the Holy Lord and the Emperor's flowing blood on top of her head. Hu Shime, in detail, dared not tell a single lie in front of Boy Yi Kao, who seemed to know everything. D. Lu Jiang Boy Yi Kao was puzzled in his heart. Isn't this thing in the novel a mix of demon emperors? How could I have this thing on my head? Doubts returned to doubts, without delaying Boy Yi Kao's continued intimidation of this demon chicken. Humph. I am the Purple Way Emperor who descended to earth, sitting in the starry sea, commanding the sun, moon, and stars. Naturally, my destiny is of utmost importance. You little demon is also bold, causing harm to the solitary head. It was the little demon lard that blinded her heart. She committed the following offense, and I begged the Holy Lord to punish her. Hu Shime was frightened in her heart, and her magical power rushed down, unable to hold it anymore. With a bang, she transformed into a nine-headed golden chicken. Boy Yi Kao's heart twitched fiercely and almost kicked him, but at the critical moment, he held back, afraid of exposing his flaws and being killed by the chicken. All right, we're all doing things for the Empress. If you're a first-time offender, you won't be punished. Boy Yi Kao waved his hand, and he also wanted to kill Hu Shime to eliminate future troubles, but what would he use to kill the millennium-old demon? I can't even hurt myself, so I can only pick it up high and gently put it down. Thank you, Holy Lord. Your great kindness is unforgettable to the little demon. Hu Shime was overjoyed and lifted her nine heads together, staring at Boy Yi Kao's scalp tingling. Let's continue doing your job, Boy Kao pretended to be sleepy, waved his hand, and turned back to bed. Yes, Lord, Hu Shime's voice suddenly changed, and Boy Yi Kao could only hear a voice that was familiar with the situation. After turning her head, she saw Hu Shime undressing with a shy expression on her face, get the orphan to Jifa's place. End of this chapter Chapter 9 When Zhong Kills the Chicken You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 When Zhong Kills the Chicken If you have too much brain, you must be sick. Boy Yi Kao was cursing and lying on his clothes, tossing and turning, unable to sleep. Hu Shime was sent by him to harm GFA, and on the way, she sent a wild game to Grand Tutor Wen Zhong. No way. Boi Yi stood up and gritted his teeth, saying, I want to practice. I stumbled upon someone with too many heads this time, which made it difficult for them to function properly. That's why I was fooled. If they come up next time and take my head, I'm afraid they won't even give me a chance to speak. Practice. Even if you can't protect yourself, if you can hold on to me and say a few words, maybe you can earn a chance to live. I don't believe it anymore. As someone like me, who dares to really kill me. Being obedient before death and punching hard after death are all bullshit. When I'm alive, I have to keep my back straight. Dare to provoke me while I'm alive. After I die, I'll settle everything and no one will want to run away. On the other hand, Hushime quietly crawled back into GFA's arms, 
and the carriage began to sway once again. Pooh! Compared to the young master, the young master's hair is simply useless. I heard that Gomzi Cow worked tirelessly to save the Marquis and couldn't sleep at night, while Gomzi F.A. probably only achieved the first two words. It wasn't like this before the young master was sent. Marquis, a lifelong sage, how did he give birth to such a person? People always change. I heard that young master F.A. never wanted to go before. The night guard whispered, his gaze occasionally glancing at the carriage, all disdainful. Recruitment list. What is this? At the four gates of Shichi, guards posted lists, attracting a group of people to stop and stop. A scholar who understood the characters stepped forward and loudly explained. The young master passed the imperial examination and issued a list of talented individuals to recruit and recruit, regardless of their background, only their abilities and abilities. Whether it's strong military strength, proficient in supernatural arts, or profound knowledge and eloquence, even if you farm better than others and do business better than others, as long as you have a good plan, you can come and reveal it. After admission, the treatment will be preferential, first come, first served. As soon as the recruitment list was released, the entire Shichi, even the territories of the two hundred towns and feudal lords under his command, were in a state of uproar. How can a small boy dare to take the imperial examination, without asking about his background and only asking about his talent? In front of Shibwa Marquis's mansion, several teams of soldiers lined up, and Boy Kao stood in front of the door, speaking seriously. The first team, go to Mount Ui, where there are two strange people named Xiao Sheng and Chao Bao. Go and invite them for Gu. Second team, go. The third team. In no time, all the soldiers were ordered to disperse, and Boi Kao stood at the door for a moment before lifting his feet and returning to the Marquis's mansion. In the novel, there are many Qi practitioners with surnames that he remembers, but nine out of ten are disciples of the three teachings, and there are also some monsters that he does not want to provoke. The rest are just two unlucky individuals, Xiao Sheng and Chao Bao. A typical person sits at home, misfortune comes from heaven, carries precious money, and with one move, they achieve remarkable results, dropping twenty-four sea god beads. And then he was beaten to death by Zhao Gongming as for the other teams, they were the locations where he ordered someone to collect the aliens, thinking that if there were dates or not, they might be able to poke something out. It seems that my current ancestor is the Yellow Emperor of Xianyuan. Should I add incense to my ancestor and see if I can pass on the teachings in my dream? If it were to be successful, it would be better than a casual cultivator. Boi Yi Kao kept muttering in his heart, but in the end, he didn't get sick and rushed to seek medical attention. As for the recruitment list, that thing is what he uses to attract firepower. Finally, he recruited a few old farmers, generals, and strangers, which can be considered as fulfilling his promise. Of course, if he truly has the ability and a clear background, he will not reject the door. In the blink of an eye, a month has passed. Jifa hesitated and finally arrived at Wenzhong's camp. Grand Tutor, the second son of Marquis Shibua, Zhongfa, seeks to meet. The large tent of the Central Army heard that Zhou was like a tiger crouching on a dragon's plate, and the generals were suffocated by his imposing presence. Ji Chang's son. What did he do on the battlefield? When Zhong's eyes narrowed slightly, an array of seamen burst out. They said they were asking for the help of the Grand Tutor, the messenger replied. Help. He he, what disaster is worth sending his son to the battlefield? When Zhong shook his head and said, it's okay, it's just that the child has arrived. If there's really something to do, it's okay. If there's anything else, he he. Yes. The messenger hurriedly walked out of the main hall, and in no time, G.F.A. arrived alone in the camp. Ha! Huh. At the moment G.F.A. lifted the tent, when Zhong Mei's head and eyes opened wide, and a white light burst out, taking a thorough look at G.F.A. from top to bottom. A demonic aura lingered around his eyebrows, like a dark cloud covering the top, lingering, 
with a faint thread curling up and extending beyond the camp. What a monster! How dare you come with me to harm people in my military camp? Upon hearing Zhong's loud roar, Qi and blood surged up, and as he stepped out of the tent, Mo Qilin rose up in response, roaring loudly like thunder. A jet of ink light flew up, and Mo Qilin had already carried Wen Zhong out of the camp and headed straight for the Shichi team. Before the person arrived, the male and female golden whips had already been whipped out from afar, transforming into two hundred Zhang dragon dragons and devouring the carriage. Boom! The carriage shattered in an instant, and a demonic aura surged into the sky, colliding head dot on with male and female dragons. Ah! A scream came, and the demonic aura was instantly torn apart by the dragon, falling onto a beautiful woman with a panicked face and blood stains on her mouth. A face dot to dot face effort, she has already been injured. Demon! If you dare to harm our human race, you should be punished. A jet of ink light flew over, revealing the figure of Wen Zhong, with his beard and hair all stretched out. Two dragons transformed into golden whips, held in his hand like heavenly gods approaching the mortal world. Watch the fight. Amidst the rushing of magic, the golden whip bloomed with thousands of radiances, carrying the power of moving mountains and filling the sea, and smashed it onto Hu Shimei's head. Old Master, I have been consecrated. Bang! When Zhongna gave her a chance to speak, the golden whip fell, and her round head exploded in an instant, splashing red and white in all directions. Hu Shimei's headless body instantly fell to the ground, making a muffled sound. Mayor! G.F.A., who was chasing out of the camp, stopped and looked at this scene with disbelief. She was angry and blindfolded, and wanted to find Wen Zhong desperately. Old thing, you dare to kill my mayor. Jifa roared with anger, and the floating chi and blood gushed out of her body, transforming into an illusory furnace. A pair of sharp eyes suddenly opened in the furnace. Enough. Feng Ming's voice was full of energy and weakness, but it seemed to carry endless anger, waving its wings to kill Wen Zhong. Ha! Huh. I arrived at the melting pot at such a young age. When Zhong casually whipped the flying phoenix and scattered it, saying casually. Child, I killed the monster that persecuted you on your behalf. If you're not grateful, it's all right. Instead, you'll have to fight against me. Is that how Ji Chang taught you, what kind of monster? That's my wife who's about to leave the house. Old man, how dare you mess around and pester me so recklessly. Why is the monster still in human form when it's dead? You child, you have a bit of a brain. Wen Zhong sneered. If the monster dies without transforming into its original form, then naturally it's not dead yet. You're right, nine-headed pheasant chicken essence. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Ji Chang Bujiwei. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10 Jichan Bujiyue, You're Right, Nine-Headed Pheasant Chicken Essence With a light and ethereal inquiry from Wen Zhong, Hu Shimei, who was lying on the ground, instantly transformed into an eight-headed golden pheasant with wings flapping. A demonic wind swept up sand and stones in the sky, hitting Wen Zhong and GFA head dot on. And her essence is to drive a demon wind and escape in the opposite direction without turning back. I still want to escape in front of me. When Zhongyi patted the ink chilin under the seat, only to hear a roar. The ink chilin's four hooves fluttered and rose into the air, as fast as thunder. G.F.A., who fell to the ground and looked incredulous, said, Demon, it's really a demon. When Zhong casually whipped the scattered sand and stones, and they chased after Hu Shimei's head. The Yin Shang dynasty is about to die, if you kill me, you will definitely have a hard time dying in the future. Hu Shimei was so scared that her liver and gallbladder were split, and her sixteen eyes stared at Wen Zhong in unison, with a look of resentment almost condensed into substance. Even a little demon dares to speak of the rise and fall of our human race. Wen Zhong Man was full of disdain, and when he whipped it, it was like a golden dragon probing its claws. Boom! 
half of whose Shimei's body was engulfed, and her eight mouths let out a mournful cry. The scorching demon blood scattered on the earth, causing all the plants to wither and wither. Wen Zhong. Wen Zhong. You must die hard. The Shang dynasty will surely perish. This is holy. Boom. The golden whip fell and turned Hu Shimei into a mist of blood, with bones and flesh scattered everywhere, leaving no one dead. Mo Chilin fell and opened his mouth wide. He swallowed a demon pill in the blood mist and chewed it twice before swallowing it. The essence of the Millennium Demon is also a great tonic for it. Wen Zhong had a cold expression on his face and patted Mo Chilin, who understood and turned to fly towards the camp. This is not true, this is not true. G.F.A. fell and sat outside the camp, feeling lost and disoriented. Child, the chicken demon has been eradicated. If you go back and take good care of it, you may not be able to regain twenty years of young life. M.O. Chilin never stopped, carrying Wen Zhong back to the camp. Not long after, the startled Shichi crowd approached and saw G.F.A. lying on the ground, carrying him back with all their might. Go back, go back. G.F.A. murmured incessantly, and all the people in Shichi were leaderless. Upon hearing G.F.A.'s words, he dared not delay, leaving behind provisions and hastily leaving. Little did they know that when Zhonghui had misunderstood and had no idea that Ji Chang was being detained in Chaoga, but it perfectly matched Boyi Kao's thought Shoshin Palace. Daji was lying on the bed resting when suddenly he was awakened by a flurry of palpitations, leaving two lines of tears in his eyes inexplicably. Zheng. On the jade pipa, string breaks and flows out a liquid like human blood, like two lines of blood and tears, twisted and twisted, as if there is a myriad of grievances. Second sister. Daji seemed to understand something, and a fox face appeared on her beautiful face. Nine pitch black shadows danced behind her, and a rolling demonic aura surged into the sky. Yay! Amidst the ever dot changing winds and clouds, countless rays of rosy light rose from all over the Chauga, converging in the sky and transforming into the form of a mysterious bird, using the power of thunder to suppress and kill Daji. The hinterland of the human race, the residence of the human king, cannot tolerate demons and demons to be rampant. If it weren't for the nine-tailed fox winning the favor of the sage, or for taking Su Daji's body and replacing it, covering up the demonic aura on his body. Otherwise, she would have been killed on the spot by the human aura when she stepped into Chauga. Now, under the wrath of Daji, his demonic aura has manifested, and in an instant, he has faced the most fierce counterattack of the human race's luck. It's broken. Under the dazzling power of the heavens, Daji finally understood what he had done and quickly gathered his demonic energy. However, it was too late, and he had already been locked in by the mysterious bird that had been transformed by his chi. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Daji was furious and his resentment grew even stronger. If it weren't for someone harming his second sister, how could I have been exposed? It seems that a price must be paid. Daji gritted his teeth and flew up to welcome the Suanio. Boom! At the moment of contact between the two, the demonic energy was instantly ignited, and the raging flames engulfed Daji in an instant. Ah! After a scream, a lacquered black fox tail fell from the flames and turned into a handful of flying ash. Daji walked out from behind the pillars, with a pale complexion. It took her a thousand years to cultivate the nine-tailed body, and now it's all gone. Shichi. Shichi. Second sister, you won't die in vain. Daji's eyes were filled with resentment, and as he opened his mouth and spat out, a demonic wind blew everywhere, rolling flames and igniting the entire palace. And as soon as she softened, she collapsed into the sea of fire. Not long after, a majestic man burst into the sea of fire, picked up Daji, and rushed out of the palace. After a moment, the huge Shoshin palace collapsed with a loud bang and turned into ruins. But the scene of the demonic aura soaring in the palace was seen by many people. Three days later, 
Daji finally woke up. King, beauty, lonely beauty, you finally wake up. Dxian got up excitedly and took Daji into his arms, saying, I'm really scared to death. Daji pretended to be afraid and said, Your Majesty, Daji is so afraid that he will never see you again. Don't be afraid, beautiful woman. With loneliness, no one can hurt you. Dxian felt heartbroken and flustered, finally coaxing the Ji away. Your Majesty, I heard that Marquis Shibwa Ji Chang is unparalleled in divination. Why don't you summon him and divine a divination for my concubine, to see how many years of good fortune I can have to accompany you by your side? Daji caressed Di Xin's chest, her voice soft, but her eyes filled with anger and hatred. Second sister, if you die in Shichi, big sister will avenge you. This Shibwa Ho Ji Chang is just the beginning. Someone, summon that old thief from Ji Chang. Emperor Xian naturally readily agreed, and the official immediately issued an order. Not long after, Ji Chang was led to the Xianqing Hall. The guilty minister Ji Chang paid his respects to the king. Ji Chang, I heard that your divination can communicate with the gods, and everyone knows it. I'm calling you this time to divine a divination for my beautiful daughter. You must be accurate in your calculations. Dxin snorted coldly, his eyes full of threats. What kind of big four marquee? He's not just a dog that comes and goes when he calls and waves. If he doesn't know how to please his master, this dog doesn't need to exist anymore. Another obedient dog would be. The guilty minister leads the decree. Gfa felt bitter in her heart, but she also had to bow down. Marquis Bo's fortune telling for his concubine is truly a timeless legend. Scream. 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 The turtle shell flipped up and down, and soon a hexagram appeared. Ji Chang just glanced at it and his face instantly changed. Ji Chang, how are the hexagrams? Seeing Ji Chang's expression, Dxian quickly stood up and asked. I'm afraid it's not because my concubine didn't have the chance to be by the king's side. Daji burst into tears, which further fueled Emperor Xian's anger. Ji Chang, I'm asking you, what's the hexagram like? If you can't calculate, today is your death date. Report to the king. Ji Chang took a slow breath and said. Consort Su is connected to the great king's fortune, and it is a combination of two ends and two flights. The sea of fire reflects the shadow of the palace, and we go to the underworld together with the coffin. This is not a misinterpretation of the hexagram. End of this chapter